Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Kevin Connors, and I'm going to share with you my journey that I promised you. This is for all my patients and uh, to hopefully encourage you and to lift you up going through your personal journey of cancer. Shared with you about a month or so ago that I'm in this whole boat with you. Um, uh, some of you may not, may not know because you haven't watched um, the Zoom calls lately, but I too have been diagnosed with cancer. And uh, uh, I want to share a little bit about that so that it's an encouragement to you and you don't get discouraged. Oh my gosh, my doctor's got cancer. I came to him and um, he's supposed to be helping me. And what's the deal here? Uh, so I want my experience to be a blessing for you. And I want to, through a series of videos um, that are going to be outside of our Zoom, regular Zoom calls, to share my journey, to share what I've been studying and trying to figure myself out. So let me give you a little bit of history. Here's me right here. I like that picture of me. Actually, that's me, but I don't like that picture of me so much. Uh, so we're going to stick with that one right there. Um, yeah, it was about uh, 16, 18 months ago, I would say, started having a lot of symptoms, um, abdominal symptoms, and uh, just kind of brushed them off. Uh, I'm sorry, but I'm a very personable, uh, very, um, very intimate person. I don't like to share my problems with anybody else. I guess I've learned after 30 some years of practice that um, I'm here to take care of my patients. And when my patients say, how are you doing? I have a tendency to say, I'm doing great. And uh, don't share any of my personal struggles or experiences with my patients, good or bad. It is what it is. Maybe it's uh, some learned behavior over the years, but it's very difficult for me to share my personal be very transparent with my health with anybody even my best friend who is my wife it's very difficult for me to do that so uh, my wife and kids will strongly testify that that is true in my life but I want to share it I just feel like the Holy Spirit is just nudging me to share my experience with with you my patients because um, because it, uh, it needs to uplift you. God has allowed this in my life for a reason. And I think one of the reasons is, um, is to encourage you in your journey through cancer or whatever serious disease that you're struggling with. Uh, so in my struggle to figure out what was going on with me, I finally discovered with about 98% accuracy what it is, what type of cancer I have. Now I knew that I had cancer because of some testing that I did, but I didn't know the exact type. And when the IV gene test came out, um, uh, you know, I was very excited about it because it's a non-invasive way to test where a person is at with their cancer because of the IV gene score. And I, was the first one to do the test. So as soon as we got the kits, I ran the test, got my score back, and it confirmed exactly what I thought. It was positive for cancer. But my score wasn't like horribly high because I had no frame of reference what score should be. It was positive in the cancer range. And I thought, okay, it is what it is. No, no, um, uh, surprise to me. I knew that I had cancer. And then when all you guys were starting to run your IVG tests and we started to get your scores back, there was a little bit more concerning for me because my score was higher than almost every one of my patients. And you know, well, I have a lot of patients that are stage four and, and, um, and, is some are doing fantastic. Some came to us not doing well at all and are doing much better. Praise God. Um, and my score was higher than most people. So it was a little concerning to me as we started to get more and more people, the tests coming in so we could get a frame of reference, what the score actually meant. 
um, in the type of cancer that the person had and in the degree of, of a spread that they had, the staging that they had. So it's taken some time to kind of evaluate the objectivity of that. Well, that told me that I was in a little bit worse situation than I initially thought. As I discovered what type of cancer I have, um, it's, um, it's uh, there it is right there. There's a picture of my cancer right there. It starts with Paget cells in the skin, and it can progress over time. Uh, it can stay in the skin like this. It's called extra mammary Paget's disease, if you care to look it up. There's not a whole lot of data on it because it's quite a rare cancer. Matter of fact, with the exact type of extra mammary Paget's disease that I have, there are less than 300 uh, documented cases of it, at least in literature. Um, because it's a very rare cancer, there's probably 10 times that many that have gone undiagnosed or misdiagnosed over the years. So, uh, but in literature at least, it's fairly rare. And even if there was 30 times that much, there, that still makes it a fairly rare cancer. So there's not a lot of data on it. Um, there was a recent study at Mayo on this cancer, and I think it was a 10 or 12 people that they did the study on trying to find a new drug because chemotherapy is is completely not effective in uh, on this uh, type of cancer so which confirmed my desire not to do chemotherapy and it was really a confirmation from the Holy Spirit that I was listening to him because I did not have any desire to do chemotherapy um, but again, just like I tell you guys, if I had a cancer that would that statistically responded very well to chemotherapy, I would uh, definitely leave it on the table for consideration. And if you look at the statistics for this type of cancer, not to be overly morbid, but here's from the Mayo study, the overall um, survivability of uh, this is the median survivability is 1.5 years and the five-year survival rate is only 7%. So not real great for uh, metastatic extra memory Paget's disease and that's what I have. So, oh well, it is what it is. And you come to terms with it. And this kind of is a summary of our road when we're dealing with cancer anyhow, right? We look ahead of us and it can be very daunting. There's people ahead of us, there's people behind us, there's people that crashed ahead of us. The road never looks nice and smooth and there's a lot of ups and downs and windy paths and we're trying to navigate this pathway. And I guess that's what I feel like. That's what you feel like. But I know that the per one of the purposes in this is you have to understand my obsession for, for the last 10 years um, has been my complete obsession has been to try to figure out how to save people's lives when God sends them to me for care. And uh, as my wife would attest, I don't have any hobbies. I spend time studying. That's all I do. And if I get off track with that, God always brings me back to be studying about something else, to be able to, to implement a protocol to keep a person alive and keep them doing well as best they can because every single person that comes to me, I feel like God has put a responsibility in front of me. And I don't say that in a way that I can heal anybody, but I say that in a way that God keeps giving me a responsibility to try to figure things out, seeking wisdom. He's put people in front of me um, that are much wiser than me. He's given me the ability to study and read and a hunger for um, knowledge in that way, and that has been fantastic. Um, but now I feel like this, what he's got going on with me, even drives me even more so, not that I'm more important than my patients, but it even tells me that God has got bigger things for me. So I'm going to read to you um, kind of a preface of, of, of a blog that I'm starting so that you can understand my journey and my desire to help you moving forward. So 
let's just read this. This is just kind of giving you a history and an intro to where I'm coming from. Um, and when I, uh, this is it's coming back, I, I wrote this some time ago, so let me go through this. There was a time that I needed to imagine the feelings felt by my cancer patients. I'm empathetic by nature, which makes me a good doctor, I think. And I've had to share, had my share of physical injuries, broken bones, sprained ankles, injuries, but cancer? I could imagine my patients' fear. I could imagine their pain. I imagined their dread of an unknown future. And I could console them with verses that assured that God would never leave them and that he desires to walk with them through their suffering wherever it may lead. There was a time. Alex sat in a chair adjacent to mine in my consult room. I shuffled through his CT report as he shared his desire to forego any more chemotherapy treatments, but he was told that the last round was just not effective and the cancer had now progressed to his liver. I asked him the same question that I ask all my cancer patients. Tell me your story. I want to know you and how you got to this point. I have to be honest, this consultation was a little bit different. It was just yesterday that I confirmed my own diagnosis and my selfish thoughts wandered to my own pain as he recalled that. It all started in September of this year. Oh, great, I thought. September was just three months ago and your first symptoms of any possible ill health progressed from stomach aches to stage four in just three months. I've had my old symptoms for twice that long. I don't know why I was surprised. It was nothing that I haven't heard before, but this time seemed so much more real. I guess I didn't have to imagine anymore. There is nothing better than experiential knowledge in most things. I could read every book written about Abraham Lincoln and become the world's best authority on his life, yet I still don't know him. I've honestly dedicated the last half of my career trying to understand cancer. And I must say that I'm more committed than most doctors. My wife would say that I really have no life other than studying. Each patient has been my textbook. Their disease, my obsession. I guess God's providential plan has an ironic twist in that now I've now become my own textbook. Alex continued. His timeline of events that shaped the last few months were clear. Scared by the sudden diagnosis, he started with surgery, resected part of the large bowel, and followed with chemotherapy. The most recent scan shattered all his hopes where he sat, looking for comfort, grasping for a future. I understood, experientially now. Will this make me a better doctor, or will this keep me from being one? Will my story be one that encourages many? Or will I be an example to the real doctors that standard oncology is the only way to go? Well, the final chapter has yet to be written, so I won't um, ponder the details with which God cannot yet trust me. But I do hope that the process may become a blessing to someone, someone, somewhere who is searching for hope that has been stolen away. At this writing, Alex is still with us, and as I read this, though a year later, he's still with us. His hope has been renewed, if only a little. I'll never understand why someone calling themselves a doctor would ever tell someone that they had X amount of time to live. How arrogant have we become to think we know God's timeline. I wonder if the bit of success that 
I've seen over the years in this practice has more to do with just renewing hope than all the therapies and diets and nutrients. I wonder if more cancer patients die of a broken spirit than a broken body. I wonder what outcomes would be like if our medical system weren't so broken, if oncologists would work hand in hand with doctors like myself, and if the patient's well-being was placed ahead of insurance documents. Most of all, I wonder what God will do with this beautiful irony of the cancer doctor's cancer. And I look forward, oh, ever so cautiously, to the ride. Yes, this is our path, this one right here. And I'm walking there with you. And um, I, I don't worry about the statistics that are out there. Besides, these statistics here that are ever so grim remind me of, uh, well, first of all, all these people did chemo. I'm not doing that. And um, I know my path and I know my savior. And that's, that's all that really matters. So I'm going to walk this path with you over the next uh, months, hopefully years. I'm going to be sharing what I'm doing. I have some new therapies that I've been studying and trying out. And I'm going to share those with you too. And that's going to be an encouragement to you. And um, I'm going to try things that I don't like and don't work and didn't work. And I'm going to try things that do work. And it doesn't mean that it's for you to use either. But I'm willing to talk to any of you. And I'm here for you. And um, I don't have the worst symptoms in the world. And a lot of you are suffering much worse than I am. But I'll tell you right now, I have peace. A peace that passes all understanding. Because I know that I'm in his sovereign will no matter what, and my trust is in him, not in my wisdom and my knowledge and my studying and all the things that I'm bringing about here tonight. But my, not my wisdom and knowledge is coming from him and my dependence is on him. And in that, I can rest because it's not my problem anymore. This cancer it never was my problem, and I'm not going to let the devil fool me to take it up. That's his burden. It's God's problem. But he's given it to me for a reason, and I hope it's to be an encouragement to you. So I'll keep up with these little blog posts, and I will see you again very soon. Thanks much.